Hello everyone and welcome to Travels with my friend. And yes, you've guessed it, we're in Venice. But where are we? No, that's not us. And that's not us, though I do love the hat. And that's not us either. Ah, oh, there she is. And there's us both exploring Venice. And if we're looking particularly happy today, you'd be right. Because this isn't just a vlog about any day. It really was one of those days we will remember forever. An absolutely perfect day out. Where we see some of the most beautiful and special places close to Stephanie's heart in this, her favourite city. And as a huge treat, we get to tour one of the most incredible hotel royal suites we have ever seen. But more on that later. Instead, for now, let's whiz along the rooftops to Stephanie's Hotel Roof Terrace on the Grand Canal, where the two of us are about to set off and start Stephanie's perfect day out in Venice. We really hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Stephanie and I live and vlog about my life at the 16th century Chateau de la Lande in the heart of France. And I'm Oliver and I live and vlog about my life in the Art Nouveau magical modernist mansion not far from Barcelona in Spain. And we've been best of friends for over 25 years. It all started with an unfortunate boating incident at university. And since then we've shared life's ups and downs. And many, many laughs along the way. We believe there are few things in life more magical than true friendship. And there is nothing we love more than exploring wonderful places with the other by our side. Join us for Travels with My Friend. So here we are, and it, I can't believe this is February. I've actually got my sunglasses. I, know, I can't believe I didn't bring <laughs> sunglasses. I've got February. I'm not going to need them. I'm jealous of yours. So, Steph, you, how, long, how long have you been coming to Venice for? Every year for absolutely years. So today is a special day because I think I've only come three times and I have seen the main sites but I haven't done enough of the undiscovered Venice. So I'm taking you off the beaten track today. So we're going to go and yeah. see some of my favourite gems yeah. and also discover a couple of new places. So this is basically an afternoon of fun. You yeah. can see how happy she is. This I is know, my favourite thing. Me. But first we have to start with definitely one of my favourite Venetian things. A little snack. Well, Follow me. No. Stay away from the window, Stephanie. Stay away. It's Steph pink. No, 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 no. I think those are rather expensive. Little pink no, no, no. We're here for the history, not the fashion. No, we're here for the donuts. We're here for the donuts. Give me a donut over a Chanel handbag any day of the week. Yeah, well, absolutely. Hey, I'm not sure that looks like a donut. It's weird, isn't it, how distracting this city is? might be familiar to some of you because it was in Indiana Jones. I was filming in this square. It's the church of San Barnaba. And now it houses an exhibition about Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. You, need, you need good walking shoes for Venice, don't you? Only about 20 more little pounds to go on it. You'll be richly rewarded. No, genuinely, we're, we're really new now. This is actually where I used to live in this area when I would rent. Uh, and I love this area so much. And it's nice because it's near all of the major sites, but just a tiny little bit off the beaten track. It's just a little bit quieter. Yeah, it's peaceful, it's wonderful. Um, it's definitely, it doesn't look like very much. This is where I came to get my fruits and vegetables every day when I was renting here. It's a little boat that sells them. And I honestly think this is one of the prettiest canals and squares in Venice. It's such a lovely area. Have a look at the, look at the architecture. Yes, and there's a local bitter that they make into a spritz, it's called china. It's actually made from artichokes. I knew you'd be excited. Every single day when I was going to go to the bakery to pick up my olive bread, they do great olive bread, I would stop and stare in this shop window. 
I just feel like taking all of the taps back to France. I want the cat one. Ophelia would love that. The cat's super, but look at the um, elephant. Elephant, yes. <laughs> They're all so good. And I like the old traditional ones, the huge sort of dolphins. Where would you put them? In the bathroom or outside? I would like it in my bathroom going into the copper bath. <laughs> And if you look, the prices, they're not horrendous. No, not at all. That's so cool. There's so many little shops like this, aren't there? <laughs> you could just spend days wandering around looking at the little shops of Venice. Here we are, we have found the donut shop. These are Fritella, and they're only made around carnival time. So from about New Year until the last day of carnival, you can buy these. The traditional ones just have pine nuts and raisins, and that's all. That's these ones, the Veneziana. But in fact, they're far, far older than Venice. They were being sold in Rome. They were called Frictilia in Latin, and I wonder if that's why we get the word fritta. Probably. I don't know. Possibly it's still from that. And they were very important in Venice. In fact, Venice's oldest recipe dates from 1300, and it is for one of these. Well, nowadays they're made in lots of different ways. There's with cream, my favorite, with zabayone because that has a little bit of marsala in there as well, so it's a little alcoholic. And with ricotta. They are all delicious. But I think um, we shouldn't be looking at them, we're talking about them. I was going to say that the theory is very interesting, Stephanie, but <laughs> preferences are the thing Well, he's not known for his uh, coordination. No, no, certainly not. Okay, so we have one zabayone and one ricotta one each. Which is the lowest calorie? <laughs> I think we've got the wrong thing. The importance of these for the city was huge. In fact, to actually make them, you had to be a fritolari, and there was an association governing it, and you could hand on the right to your children. Okay, so you weren't allowed to make them unless you were one? No, no, not from about 1600s onwards for a couple of hundred years, really. It was very protected. What would in happen fact, if you snuck in a bit of quick donut making in the evening? You don't, don't ever sneak in a bit of quick donut making here. It ends up in the Doge's palace in the prison. <laughs> in fact, next, I would really like to take you to Carasone. That's a beautiful, beautiful palazzo. And there is a painting of a big bullet there. Let's go. Mm. Well, after this. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. Wow. strange to come to the most glorious palace all decorated in 18th century style in Venice just to look at a picture of a donut cellar but I think it's worth it admittedly we might be distracted by a few other things on the way this place is amazing already I'm imagining arriving for a grand ball this is the ballroom of Carrezzonico with its magnificent, original, wooden, gilded chandeliers. I don't know how high the ceiling is, 
but I'm going to guess about eight meters, maybe more. It is vast. Crazily tall, incredible. This is for you, Oliver. I feel he brings new meaning to the word sheepdog. He's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> like a sheepdog poodle. <laughs> Still haven't got to the donut painting, but I've fallen in love with the desk. I've fallen so cool, completely in love with the desk. What could I not achieve at this desk? Great thing, Stephanie. <laughs> There's even a little picture on it down on this side. And it's dated 1741. 1741. Stephanie, where is the donut picture? I can't remember where the donut picture is, so we're all on donut hunt right now. Okay, there's lots of pictures. <laughs> No, but it is by Longhi, and so I think it was probably in this room. Oh, what's this? Apples. Apples. I was very, very close to thinking we'd found the donuts. Oh, that's so cool. that I found it. Yes, yes, yes. They used to serve them on skewers. There they are. That's the traditional ones made with pine nuts and raisins and plain other than that. And they would thread them onto a skewer and sell them like that. And this entire room is filled with this suite of paintings by Pietro Longhi showing Venetian life. They're absolutely amazing, aren't they? So charming. Does it make you hungry for another donut? Or? <laughs> I'm just loving the paintings. Look at the carnival masks. And then lots of indoor scenes. This is the alchemist. There's the alchemist. We have the hairdresser. Oh, essential for your pre-carnival. Look, look at this family. Look at the children. They're darling. These children are so cute. Look at them. That one's got a little dog. And there's a baby at the back. In a pause from all of the partying at Carnival, this is a visit to the convent. <laughs> Sister, confess for your <laughs> excesses at the Gosh, look, there's a hippopotamus at the, car at oh, the Carnival. This was a very famous rhino, actually, not hippo. Oh. It was probably Clara, because there's a hippo called Clara who toured all of the courts of Europe in the mid 18th century and was an absolute favorite by all the kings Clara lived 17 years in really? Europe. Was Clara, Clara was Clara quite playful and friendly. Clara loved it. Had a whale of a time. Yes. Oh, and above, oh. there's... That's the morning hot chocolate. Hot chocolate was the absolute craze for all members of the upper classes in the 18th century to start the day with hot chocolate. It was considered extremely beneficial to health. The lady preparing looking in the mirror. Beautiful. And over here, we have the family who lived in this palace. Where are they? There they are. That's the Retsonico family, and we're standing in their room right now looking at these paintings. It'll have to be you who does it, Ollie. You're the artist. That's good to an idea, actually. What a beautiful room. Anyway, now we've seen our donut. What's next? Come and see.
Steph, you look at this door. Yes, this room is great. There's fantastic tapestries, but my favourite thing in it is definitely this 18th century door. So this is around the link to the east and so forth, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah, it's so exotic with that incredible camel and the spindly palm tree at the base. We're going to have to zoom in on that camel's head. It's quite magnificent. <laughs> So which one are you going for, Steffi? It's this blue one. Look, isn't that beautiful? With a chateau on it. Is it a chateau? I think it's there's castle. a ruined castle in the background, but there's a lovely lake scene in the foreground. Oh, that looks like Vesuvius. Oh, wow. I've discovered my favorite. This, with the duck head blue and the gold. I'm actually quite surprised, Oliver. Why? Well, I thought you'd be more into the frolicking ladies. <laughs> a married man, Stephanie. You can't <laughs> frolic with ladies anymore. is to try and find a room to stay in that is absolutely typically Venetian, preferably in a palazzo, and then I can just dream and imagine that I'm back in the 18th century. Now, I have a lovely room in the Bower, but there is a much better room in this hotel, and they very kindly said that we could have a little peek at it. So let's go and have a little look. A little peek? At the Royal Suite. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, this already feels very different from our corridor. <laughs> <laughs> this has got a certain air. Yeah, it's got a certain grandeur. Ooh, here we are. Here we are. This is it. Mm, going in. I'm ridiculously excited right now. I'm sort of imagining that I'm just going into my own room. Oh, oh my, my goodness. Word. Stop laughing, it's so beautiful. Oh, the walls! Look at that ceiling. This is incredible. And look at the way the water from the Grand Canal is just reflected onto the ceiling in ripples. Look at the view. I could cry, I'm so happy. You're obviously going to struggle with that for some time, Oliver. Well, it's clearly childproof. Maybe we won't be getting out of that <laughs> We will. Here, let, let the expert do it. Let's open this. Oh, not like that. Maybe try the different door. Maybe that one works better. Mm -hmm. We've got this. We've got this. We haven't got this at all. You've See, done it! Just takes a genius. Oh, you're used to your, your shutters, aren't you? Oh. oh my goodness. Oh wow. With a view straight onto Santa Maria della Salute, one of my favourite churches in Venice. And have you seen how lovely these curtains are? It's just, it's just magical. It's billowing the light the coming in and the shimmering on that water is incredible. It's like having your very own palazzo. I'm just going through to the bedroom to get a good night's sleep before tomorrow's carnival festivities. I want to jump on the bed, but there are people actually checking in in half an hour, so I can't do that. They won't mind. <laughs> we'll leave it just have a, perfect. Just curl up and have a little sneeze. Look, I recognise these. Do you remember my uh, lampshades that I bought in Venice? Yes. I had some Fortuny fabric lampshades made in Venice a few years ago, and they're just like these. So it's originally those would have had candles behind them with that design, is that right? Well, I think that in Venice they quite often do the half lampshades. Mm. Um, it's much less popular in the rest of Europe, but I think they're really pretty and I got some as well. 
Wow. So yes, that is definitely for tuning fabric. Let's take a stand and look at this bed. Come on. And the fabric. I know it's nerdy, but look at the size of the pattern repeat on the fabric. It's got to be nearly two meters. Oh, peacock feathers! Exactly. I'm feeling right at home. It's as though Thor is with me. You're destined to be in this suite, Stephanie. I'm glad you spotted that. <laughs> oh, yes, I think you're right. We'll call this the peacock room. And then we look at the ceilings, all the detail. And Ollie the commode! Oh my goodness. Wow. Look at the colours. I love this piece of furniture. How old do you think that one is? That looks... Honestly, I, I have no idea. It's in the 18th century style. Yeah. I love painted Italian antiques. I, it, painted Italian furniture is just spectacular. Detail on it. Wow. So we've got all these lovely muted dusky colours, haven't we? We've got the greens, yes. the oranges. The magnificent fabric on the walls. What's through this door, Stephanie? Oh, I don't know because I've seen the bathroom. Ah, oh, dressing room. Ah. Oh. Very important. Mirrors everywhere on all of the doors. The doors are stunning. A little safe. For your jewels. Good fill length mirror. Very important. Getting ready. What's in this cupboard? Cupboard. Ah, a bigger bathroom. Ah. Oh. A second shower. This is only a one-bedroom suite, so that's quite surprising. Oh wow! Showers and bath. <laughs> Look at those and these curtains. The way they drape at the end is stunning. Still a canal view. <laughs> Basically, you just sit on the loo looking at the canal. Yes. You. Shall I check that out for you? Yes. Yes, indeed, that is what you're yes, doing. Yes, yes, I can confirm. <laughs> Want to film view from the loo? Yes, view from the loo. <laughs> It's a loo with a view. Oh, it's stunning. Never get people to get off the loo, would you? <laughs> Look at this. Look at the details here. I love this above the bath. Old taps. I like these distressed mirrors. Even in the dressing room, there is a beautiful terrazzo floor with a lovely little border going around this tiny room. And the terrazzo floor in the bedroom. It has bouquets of flowers in each of the corners. Beautiful, isn't it? Stephanie, this is what I'd like. If it's ever my birthday, you know. One of these. I, I thought it was because your birthday once a year, Ollie. It, it is. Yeah, actually, it's a very good point. So mm. it's going to come around soon. To be honest with you, at the moment, my clothes are thrown everywhere. No, but this is more like a gentleman's sort of way to dress. So you've got your cufflinks at the top, your jacket here. Is this for your shoes? I'm not sure. Maybe your trousers. Trousers, definitely trousers, Oliver. What sort of a gentleman are you? You don't even know how to use I'm, it. I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm one in training, but it's, it's difficult. <laughs> it's difficult. I know what you're all thinking. How can you fit all of your clothes into that dressing room? That's what you're thinking, isn't it? I knew it. Don't panic. Phew. It's going to be okay. It's his and hers dressing room. Oh, for you, so I can put my one pair of shoes there. Yes, I would definitely nab the dressing room nearest to the bedroom and bathroom. And I think this is clearly the gentleman's dressing room. I think so. This is lovely. It's beautiful, isn't that, that dark, dark wallpaper? Yeah, there's a lovely, lovely paisley wallpaper in black and gold. Very nice. And how do you see this pair of antique Venetian Murano mirrors? A pair! Look at the colours at the top. Look. I like the way they're hanging on tassels as well. And again, on the main mirror over the fireplace, there are these extraordinary etchings. And this one's signed on Gabo, Venezia. It's one hell of a mirror, isn't it? <sighs> this hotel is just glistening with lights. It's absolutely incredible. It has to be one of the most beautiful hotel rooms. It has to be. What else has that view over one of the most beautiful cities in the world? I mean, the chandelier. We haven't even mentioned the chandelier yet. <laughs> Let's have a look. Oh, wow.
and I love the bar relief above. I think our time is up. I think there are actually genuine guests arriving. I want to be the genuine guest. Maybe we can make <laughs> maybe we can make friends with them. I feel lucky just to have been able to come in here and see this beauty because when I'm staying in Venice, I like to feel that I'm living life as people would have lived it back in the 18th century in these amazing palazzos. I want to feel history surrounding me. And that beauty, it feels like not only travel to Venice, but time travel. As though you're waking up in your own palazzo and just greeting Venice in the morning with this view. It's the stuff of dreams, isn't it? It really is. It's a total immersion into the Venetian experience. Stephanie, I've got some bad news. I don't want to hear it. We have to go. No, no, we must have just uh, look after my orchids. We have to go. <laughs> no, we have to. My orchids. Really I'm sure my go. orchids need my attention and I can't leave. <laughs> I, I, the table, all the table gone. I'm sure they want to eat us. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. You're a meanie on the phone. I'm really here for your <laughs> spotted a Banksy in Venice. I think you have too. Wow, it's making me feel like home. Well, like this London. Is this is a renovation project. We keep getting distracted. We are not here to buy a stunning renovation project, let's face it. Look at the roof terrace cocktails in the evening. It's glorious, just glorious. And it's got the balcony with the big windows. And the ironwork in that door is beautiful. Well, though, to be fair, the ironwork is there, but the door isn't. <laughs> Walking to the puppet theatre, I just feel like following these beautiful women. How lovely is that? <sighs> what do you think they're doing? Actually, I think I know what they're doing. What do you think they're doing? There's a special part of Carnival where the maidens of Venice walk to a specific church, and I think that's what's going on right in front of us. I think we should go to that specific church. Should we follow them for a sec? I bet you think we should follow them. Focus, Oliver, focus. <laughs> I am here as Camilla's representative. I'm much more interested in puppets. That's, that's very I'm true, interested. let's go. No maidens of Venice for me. So Oli, I've shown you loads of my favorite things in Venice, but one of the really important things to do in Venice is to discover something new every time you end the city. So the next thing we're going to do is to go to the home of Goldoni, 
and I've never done this before. He was an incredibly prolific Italian playwright in the 18th century, and he completely revolutionized Italian theater. He took the Commedia dell'arte with its fixed characters and turned it into more a soap opera of daily life, especially focusing on the middle classes. Basically, we're talking Venetian Coronation Street. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, a little more illustrious, a uh, cross between Venetian Coronation Street and a Venetian dynasty, somewhere in the middle, I guess. Okay, all right, so dynasty <laughs> with Coronation, din American dynasty with British Coronation Street, and we have the Golden. We have the home of it all here. Perfect, let's go in. He wrote in Italian, in the Venetian dialect, but also in French, because he spent the last few decades of his life in France, where he made plays for the French court. Marie Antoinette, Louis XVI, would have seen his plays there. Stuff. Look at this, look at the paint. I love this so much. I just think this would be the answer to all of my organisational needs. Yes, you can put all your little letters and things in yes, here. Yes, file them away. I really love it. Beautiful. And you seen the dress on the back? Wow, that is um, quite hippy. <laughs> I mean, how do you actually get through a door in that? Elegantly sideways. What, like what this. period is this? This is 18th century and it's a Robert Francaise. You can tell because Robert La Française had a cape built in that came down from the shoulder with a little train. It's wow. so elegant. And what's this made of? Is this a basket? Uh, yes, they're just made of hoops that sit on the side, attach around the waist, and it's surprisingly comfortable because inside each one you have big pockets, like bags, suspended. So in fact, it's like carrying two big handbags. So you can put your shopping space, in there when you go. Put all your shopping in, and it's held on your waist, so it's very comfortable. Okay, but you can't ever sit down, really, can you? you Unless it's a very wide chair. Exactly, you just need the furniture to match. Speaking of that, there is a chaise longue next door. Okay. It's exquisite. Have you seen this? It's absolutely stunning. It is, and it's much lighter than most of yeah. the chandeliers we've seen. It's very it's long, spindly. Long and slender. And look all the way up to the top, the clouds at the top. So they're normally quite crowded, aren't they? And this one is just really elegant. Love it. I think I would like living in this house very much. Yes. But look at this. Is this what you were talking about? This is the one I have. Oh, yes. This is where I would have spent my days. I can see you on that. It's stunning. Absolutely stunning. And that is why you have to do something new every time you're in Venice. What a gem! It's a tiny, tiny museum. That's three rooms. Three minutes, yes. But it's totally worth it just for that puppet theatre alone. Uh, and for the actual building itself, because yeah. this is a very typical late 14th, early 15th century palazzo. Goldoni was actually born here, and it's that Venetian Gothic style. I'm in love with this building.
my outside is the most amazing oh. mask shop, and I want the cat. You want the cat? I want this. Look at this one with the velvet swirls and the ostrich feather. Cute. And they have, most importantly, pockets. Should we have a little look inside? I think I've fallen in love with this mask. It's absolutely stunning. What do you think? I think it's. I've never seen anything like it. It's Which incredible. Very, very elegant and coquettish. In it. What colour dress would you wear with it, do you think? Well, I have a silver dress. I think that the pink and the silver would be like okay together. Okay. Okay, Ollie. Pink and gold, silver and white. Can you put the silver one on a second? It's hilarious, you've got this clown right behind you. Looks like he's laughing. Oh, wow. That is stunning. Now try the pink again. <laughs> oh, I'm torn. Because I think the, the silver goes best with this particular coat, but the pink is so unusual. Um, I think I'm with the pink. Pink, team pink. Yeah, I like the pink as well. Great. He is the best one. Oh my goodness, there's a lady. Oh, there's Where? oh my goodness. Yeah, she's extremely cheerful. Wow, look at that dress. I think of the two, he is my favourite. He's, He's got a slightly smug, haughty expression that I rather like. It's very cool. Isn't he amazing? I've just spoken to the um, gentleman and he is a properly crafted puppet. And unfortunately that means that he is a little out of our price range. How much is he? 380 euros. He is lovely. It might have to be for a very, very special present at some point. Yeah, he's lovely. But you can see why they're expensive because that's handmade. Um, and you know, this comes proper Venetian stuff. If you ever make one, I'll make the clothes for you, okay? Okay, thank see you. you. Goodbye, puppet. Not for us today, but we can dream. <laughs> Look at the clown. Have you seen this gentleman around here, Ollie? What is that? Look here. Oh my goodness. He That's looks very cool one. incredibly intellectual. You'd have to say something really profound <laughs> at your mask ball if you're wearing that. This is very good with my coat. I love that. That's kind of a, one, just looks like a, a mouse, maybe? A little bit like Zorro or something. Or butterfly, perhaps? It's not very sure. cool. This is one hell of a mask shop, isn't it? It feels regal. You look, you look as though from here with that coach, you're one of the three musketeers. You're going to get your sort of cutlass out. That is the look I'm going for. Uh, start doing some whooshing around. <laughs> Stephanie, the gentleman just told me this is the oldest workshop for masks in the whole of Venice. Oh, how lovely. I'm actually not surprised to hear that at all. I've, just, I've never seen such a, a wide range of sort of selection. It's incredible. Everything's exquisite. Stephanie, please can you try this one on because I just think it's really Which pretty. One? The blue, I've never seen one like it. Oh, this one? Yeah. Sure. Wow. What do you think? I love it. Yeah? Honestly, you should see this. It's absolutely stunning. It's such a lovely colour. Yeah, I just love that blue. <laughs> wow. You know I love cats. Yeah, of course. Come and look at this. <laughs> Puss in boots. It's a puppet Puss in boots. Oh, it's so cute. Absolutely, it's We exquisite. have to make a puppet theatre. <laughs> Stephanie, I can see you may be interested. Oh, you may be going in for it. I love this shop. Years ago, I had two large or two lampshades made here and I completely lost it. I didn't know where it was. I'd just seen it as we were walking past by sheer fluke. You lost what? The lampshade or the shop? The entire shop. I lost the entire oh my shop. Goodness. I had how, the how negligent of you. Okay. <laughs> but now I found these lovely ones I'm going to be taking back this year. Wow, look at those. I love the embroidery one. Look at this. Wow. Fantastic. Girl. 
We're going to need to get beautiful. a trolley after this. Um, yeah, this is not ideal for me. The amount of fun. They are really pretty though. Getting Sometimes them home. When you see these things. Yeah, getting them home would be tricky, but I think it's worth it. So you'd lost this shop and now you found it. I know. All because of you, Oliver. It's absolutely stunning. This is a really cool shop. Yeah. I don't actually have any lamps that need them, but one day. You have to start buying lamps just so you can get the shades. Yeah. I feel I've gone back in time. Do you know where we're going? I do. <laughs> this is amazing. It's definitely, we're, we're, st we're still walking. This is quite a long way to our next destination. Steffi, when you said we're nearly there, <laughs> did you, can you define nearly for me? Okay. Yes. It's okay, Holly. You can come to Venice and not come to Chicago. But I think the best thing to do is to just pick one that you love and look for something in particular. So what's in here? And here is my favourite tune. Really? Not everyone has a favourite tune. Do you have a favourite tune? Probably not, no. Okay, well, this is definitely my favourite tune. It's the tune of Hanover, the sculptor. And I didn't know that when I saw it, but I was absolutely struck by it. And in fact, Canova designed it himself, but not for himself. He designed it for Titian. The tomb of Titian is opposite. They didn't go with Canova's design, but on his death, they used that design for his own tomb. And it is very, very moving. What's the church called, Steffi? I can't see it. It's the church of the Ferrari. This is absolutely typical of Venice because it is constantly being restored. And so my favorite tomb is behind scaffolding at the moment and I can't show you, but I can show you the beautiful painting by Titian. But as we're here, let's go and have a quick look at that. That's such a shame. It is honestly, you've just got to take my word for it. See the top of it. It's an amazing tomb. Wow, I'm going to take a picture of the picture. I don't believe this. What's happened? Titian has also been taken away. Oh my away. goodness, it is. Look, it's just, it's just a, a digital copy of it on a piece of white. <laughs> I can't believe you've brought me to see your two favourite <laughs> things two in here and they're both things. covered. Nothing else is covered up. I don't, literally the only two things. Hang on. There is one other tomb that I used to come and see here. I know that makes me sound like a weirdo. It's a tomb of Monteverdi. Let's see if Monteverdi is unwrapped. Third time lucky. Third time lucky. Is Monteverdi going to do it for us? He's not covered up. Please, thank goodness for Monteverdi. Here, he lands here. There's some of his music here. Obviously, the composer of many early operas. I think it's just such a beautiful space. That painting is always lit magnificently like this. It's jewel-like. And it's a wonderful place to come and just contemplate the importance of music in our lives. Wow. It's a really calm corner of this enormous church. It's a beautiful church to come to. Honestly, sometimes you can see things here. <laughs> Thank you, Monteverdi. At least you pulled through for us. There 
is at least another titian here that we can look at and you see how extraordinarily jewel-like it is, how the colours seem to glow from within the painting and how there's a real naturalism that's come through in art with him. If you look at the Virgin, she does seem like a woman rather than just an icon. It's amazing, isn't it? You can see the luminosity of the oil paints compared to the photo. Yeah. It's just like a whole different experience. Yeah, it's totally different. Which is why it's so amazing when you see these things for real. So next time you're here, you have to come and look at the Assumption. But look at the cape of the man playing in the foreground. The gold, the folds. Almost certainly the man who commissioned this magnificent painting. And again, with this painting, Titian broke a lot of the expected rules. The Holy Family is not at the centre of the painting. The Virgin and Child are off to the side, above St Peter, who is looking in his book. He stopped reading for a moment to introduce Pizarro, the man who actually commissioned this altarpiece, to the Virgin. He is kneeling with his family, and one of the most extraordinary things is that one of them is looking not towards the Holy Family, but out towards us, and it's Pizarro's nephew, and his eyes seem to follow you. It's really one of the masterpieces of all time. It's absolutely stunning. So it doesn't really matter that the other ones are covered up because this is still <laughs> glorious. <laughs> absolutely glorious. I'm you actually quite emotional. I know. Even though everything was covered in scaffolding, just to see that Titian. It was. It was. And I could see the disappointment when we saw the tomb of Canova, mm. and then we went to the top as well. But then that was just such a treasure to see it's on the way It's spectacular. Out. Yeah. And I think that's the thing to do if you're in Venice: is really choose one masterpiece to go and contemplate in a church, rather than trying to fit ten churches into the day because they all merge into one. But if you go in and just really focus on one piece, it's quite moving. I mean, there is so much stuff here that it's literally overwhelming. And therefore, I think I like the idea of just choosing one or two things and thinking I'm going to take my time. Yes. Slow tourism is our, is our motto today. I'm not sure it? we've done slow tourism very well. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like so we've been walking for hours, but I've loved every minute. What we need to do is sit down and have a local spritz, a chinao spritz. Okay. Sounds good. That's the one that's made for the artichokes. Exactly. We looked at yes. the artichokes this morning, yes. now we can look at them. Excellent. Yeah, I want to point something out to you. Actually, a local that I knew in Venice pointed this out to me one day. And you can see above this door, there's a little the yeah, I can. If one knocked on the door, they could look down through there and check that it wasn't the police before opening up. So it's a modern day security camera. Absolutely. What do you think, what's going on in there? Was that? It was probably a gambling den because they were made illegal in the 18th century. I suspect it wasn't a brothel because I don't think that they were illegal. So my money is on gambling den. Oh, very good joke, Stephanie. Very good I joke. I mean it was a joke. <laughs> We're going to go into Florence now. This is the oldest coffee house in Venice. And so Byron came here, Casanova, of course, Goldoni, Dickens. Everybody has had a nice cup of coffee or hot chocolate in here. And we usually do that, but I think tonight it's time for our cocktail. Oh, really? Excellent. Yeah, of course. Look at this, Ollie. Here is your Chinar Spritz. This is the artichoke drink. So as we were looking at the artichokes this morning, I felt that we needed this to celebrate the produce of Venice. We definitely do. That's why we're just celebrating the produce of Venice. Vegetable intake for the day. Right, that's one of my five. <laughs> This cafe was founded in 1720, making it Italy's oldest cafe. But, I mean, as you can see, the decoration was redone, this is 19th century. It is utterly spectacular. And one of my favorite places to have a drink. So what do you think, Ollie? Everyone who's been here for ages. I think it's, this is my type of place. I mean, I'm a Starbucks fan, but I have to say, <laughs> this takes it to another level. What I love about it is you've got people in colored costume all over that. It's amazing, look. I know. Costumes and mobile phones is quite a funny and combination. And, and these paintings, so 19th century, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Look at this. 
doesn't get much better than this, does it? I feel like I'm slightly wearing the wrong era of costume. Yeah, we're letting the side down. We are, and these people are magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. This is such the place to go. And you know why it was so popular in the 18th century, especially with Byron and Casanova? It was one of the only cafes that accepted women. Oh, really? Yeah. And that's why it was so popular. I was say, the other cafes sound a bit boring. People wanted to be where the ladies are. Absolutely, yes. Especially when everyone's dressed so beautifully. So you, these are 19th century. Wow, look at that. And the ceiling as well. It's absolutely stunning. Every room in this place is just a work of art. It's beautiful. Thank you so much for an amazing day. Have you a have, fantastic time. You have shown, shown me a whole new sort of side to Venice and it's made me realise that I need more time here basically. We could do days like this every day for a month and not run out of things to do. It's Absolutely. Incredible. Cheers, Ollie. Cheers. Let me just do this. Tricky to drink Chino whilst filming, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> you Cheers. have to work so hard for this, don't you, Ols? Cheers. To our next adventure. Thank you so much for an amazing day.